Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody is doing well out there. Uh, in this video, I want to show you a piece of hardware that was sent to me by a company called Tiny Pilot. Uh, they sent over the Tiny Pilot KVM, and now I use it every day. Uh, it's it's something I literally use every day in my rack in my home lab, uh, just to just to, to remote into things more easily and be able to. Uh, to get to different sections of uh, my systems that I wouldn't be able to get to uh, via SSH or something like that. So uh, without uh, any, any more rambling, uh, trying to uh, set up this video, let's just jump over to my desk where I will show you what the Tiny Pilot KVM is and how it works. Okay, so this is more or less what you're gonna get when you open up the Tiny Pilot uh, shipping packaging. Uh, first off, you're obviously gonna get the Tiny Pilot, which we will address. Um, I actually got this little adapter here. I believe this is an additional charge if you wanna get this, but I highly recommend this and I'll, I'll explain what this does in a minute. And then of course we've got a, a, a quick charge uh, power brick here. It does about 18 watts, uh, different uh, amps and voltages, that sort of thing. Um, then you're also gonna get um, a power cable. Uh, this will actually go into, uh, into here like so. And then uh, this other end will plug into uh, the tiny pilot. Uh, then you're also gonna get a couple of uh, cables, uh, these are just uh, USB-A on one end and uh, micro USB on the other end. So both of these will plug into, into this little adapter here, uh, one of them, and you can see that it's got a micro uh, USB on each one. Uh, this one is for power and uh, the other one is uh, for data. So basically the way this works is you're gonna plug this end, uh, one of these into here, uh, into power, if I can get that, oh, get that in there the right way like so, and then this end uh, will plug into your uh, micro USB here, or uh, sorry, into your power brick, like that. <clears throat> and then this other side uh, will also plug in uh, to, the, to this little adapter, like so. And then that end will plug into whatever device it is you want to manage. Now, I guess I also mentioned, or forgot to mention, uh, there's also, uh, you should also get uh, uh, an HDMI cable for this as well. So this is the uh, the HDMI cable I will be using. This is just a short uh, double L or double right angle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the one end will plug into uh, the, the tiny pilot. The other end will plug into uh, the other device. And uh, that's how we will get our uh, video signal from the other device to the tiny pilot here. So uh, basically it's, it's, it's a very simple setup. Uh, once you once you kind of go through everything, these cables, of course, you can change these out for whatever length you need. These are, these are really long. And I know why they sent these uh, as long as they did, because they don't know what kind of a, an environment you're going to be in. Um, so if you need to, you can swap these out for shorter cables, just make sure that they're good for uh, sending power. I know that there are some uh, micro USB and just USB cables in general that only send data. So make sure that you get uh, cables that will also support power. Um, so basically, let's let's actually take a look at this. This is just a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, it's the four gig model, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, this case was actually uh, 3D printed uh, and, and they, they use a third party vendor for that uh, based on the communication that I had uh, with Michael over there at Tiny Pilot. But uh, this is the Tiny Pilot KVM, the, the case just brilliantly printed. You would never know unless you got real close and looked at it. I don't have the, the macro capabilities with this camera to do that. Uh, but this is just a, uh, a Raspberry Pi 4, uh, four gig model with a custom 3D printed case. Uh, you can see that it came with a, a micro SD card that's got the operating system on it. And what really sets this apart from a normal Raspberry Pi and Raspberry Pi case is the addition of uh, this HDMI cable right here. This is basically your capture card. So what they've done is actually taken this HDMI port and connected it to the camera port on the uh, on the Raspberry Pi uh, to make it basically a capture card, which I thought was pretty clever of them to do. So while we're while we're doing this, let's actually just take a quick look at the inside of this, so you can see what's really going on. Uh, so you can see that there's no uh, there's no black magic or anything crazy going on in here. So let me grab a screwdriver, like so. A couple of screws here. Uh, this is actually my first time taking this apart. Um, so uh, what I, whatever we see here. Um, it will be the first time I've seen it uh, in person. I have seen other videos. I believe Craft Computing did uh, a video about one of these uh, not too long ago. Uh, he did a great job of reviewing this, so I definitely recommend checking that out. Uh, I'm gonna pop, well, let's, let's just do that. There we go. So there, there's the case. Again, this is, this is so well built. Uh, looks like this is revision 17 maybe, uh, based on what we're, what we're seeing right there. Uh, and then of course, inside we've got our Raspberry Pi 
And here you can see they've got uh, their, their HDMI uh, a daughter board basically uh, that connects to uh, this, this plug right here. And then there's also a fan in there uh, that's uh, five volts running off those two pins. Uh, as you would expect, uh, I believe there might even be enough room in here if you ever wanted to, uh, you might be able to throw a, uh, a heat sink on the, on the processor there if you wanted to, if you needed to, whatever, but it does not come with one. So that's it, like that's how simple this really is. You could make one of these for yourself if you had access to all of the parts. Uh, it just, the, the only thing that you would wanna do uh, beyond that would be to get the actual uh, pro license for, uh, for the software in order to, uh, to get the full functionality there. So like I said, Raspberry Pi 4 uh, with just a, an HDMI daughter board that plugs into the camera module uh, on the board itself. So I tell you what, let's actually, uh, let's, let's set this up under the camera here so you can see everything. Uh, I'll grab another device that we can plug into and uh, then we can kind of look at, at the whole setup up and running. So there you go. Uh, once, uh, once you plug it in, you can see that the power light comes on. That thing is crazy, crazy bright. I will probably uh, put some fingernail polish or some paint or something over that, because uh, that, that is crazy bright. This is an on-off switch as well, so if you ever needed to kill it without uh, remoting in, you could do that just by flipping that switch. Uh, though I don't recommend that because of uh, you run the risk of, uh, of, of corrupting your micro SD card that's in there. Uh, so just something to keep in mind there. All right, so here we're gonna use uh, this Latte Panda that I've used in a ton of videos uh, as I was really getting the, uh, the, new, the new content up and running. I'm just gonna go ahead and plug that in. Uh, hopefully uh, we should see, there we go, there's our red light. And then these are always just cantankerous for me to get started up. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is actually plug in uh, this data cable over here, this USB cable like so. And uh, then uh, we're basically, base oops, I also need to plug in uh, some network cables. So let's do that next. data that way, like so. Oops, knocking everything off over here, like so. And then, of course, we need our video here, like that, so plug that into there. And, of course, I did that backwards, I think. Let me, yeah, I want this to come out that way, like so. And then this one. This is kind of janky the way I've got all this set up here. Of course, you would want to be uh, much more diligent about your cable management, uh, the way this is set up. But uh, with this being said, now we can actually jump over uh, to our desktop and, uh, and kind of take a look at what's going on here. Okay, so here we are. We're on, on tinypilot.local here. Uh, you, can, you can change that later if you want to, but uh, basically this is the interface. And when you first get it, I highly encourage you uh, to come over here and click security. Um, and if you want to, definitely add a username and password uh, just for some added security there. I'm gonna go ahead and untick that. Um, also updates, uh, this is the very first thing you really should do is make sure that you're running the, the latest version. Uh, when I got mine, I, I got a little note with mine saying, hey, uh, we, we just updated this after we, after we shipped. So uh, update this as soon as you get it. And I'm glad I did, it was a much better experience uh, with the new interface. Uh, here we can change the host name uh, from, from Tiny Pilot to whatever you wanna change it to. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it as Tiny Pilot though. Um, so let's come back over to here. Uh, we can view logs uh, for debugging, that sort of thing. If you need to, uh, if you need to, to get troubleshooting, tech support, whatever, uh, this is what you would send uh, tech support to have them help you diagnose the issues you're having. Uh, then power, uh, shut down, restart, cancel. Uh, those, are, those are there if you need them. Actions, uh, we can paste or a screenshot. Uh, and then here, cursor, uh, you can just have a default cursor, no cursor, crosshair cursor, and it kind of shows uh, what those cursors look like when you go over them. Uh, this is important, uh, in my opinion, if you're going to um, have uh, like a desktop operating system, like let's say you're going to, to remote into or, or KVM into a, a, a desktop operating system. Uh, if you just leave this as default, you'll end up with two cursors on your screen uh, and it's, it's kind of finicky. So I like to just turn that off so that when you're on there, uh, just the one cursor shows up. Uh, I'll try to demonstrate that here in just a little while. <clears throat> 
But that's basically it as far as the interface here is concerned. Oh, you can also enable uh, uh, that, well, you can enable that too. So as you type, if you look in the bottom corner there, you can see the most recent seven characters it looks like that you typed. Uh, I like to turn that off for security reasons. Uh, you can also show a keyboard if you wanted to do that. I have a, a virtual keyboard down here, you could do that as well. Uh, I like to have the keyboard off. Uh, again, that's personal preference and you can go full screen if you wanted to do that as well. Uh, I don't want to do that right now, but there you go. So <clears throat> what makes this KVM or the, this, this device kind of cool is, is something fairly simple. Like you can, you can SSH into any of your devices it, as long as you've got SSH enabled. You can SSH in and do what you need to do and that's fine. But what SSH can't do is this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach over here and I'm going to try to power this on. There we go. After a little while now, we can actually get into, oops. We're not gonna have to uh, gonna have to do a reboot on that. Let's go to maybe system setup. So now that it's booted up, I can actually I should be able to get into uh, the BIOS here. There we go. So here we are in the BIOS. Of course, you can't do that uh, with SSH because SSH is uh, only available in the operating system, uh, at least in this setup anyway. So you, we'd never be able to get into the BIOS and make uh, changes and, and updates and things like that to this system w without some sort of a, a keyboard and monitor plugged in. And what I dig about the, 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 the tiny KVM is that, well, again, it's a, it's a Raspberry Pi um, and, and we're in my browser. Uh, we're, we're doing all of this through the browser uh, without having to have an additional monitor and keyboard and mouse and all this stuff set up or, or available, maybe you don't have, maybe you don't have the room for an extra mouse and keyboard monitor to do this kind of thing uh, or, or whatever the case may be. Well, now you can use uh, the tiny pilot to get in here and, and do all of this stuff uh, very easily, very uh, seamlessly uh, so with, uh, with all of this. So <clears throat> then of course we can do this, we can go to save and exit. Uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and save. Uh, we'll go ahead and boot up, you know, into our operating system here. And there we go, now we're logged in, well, at least now we're on our login screen. Uh, and basically at this point, this is gonna look like any other SSH terminal. So uh, that kind of gives you the idea of some of the neat little things you can do. But now let's take a look at a desktop operating system setup. Okay, and through the uh, magic of editing, as they like to say on some channels, uh, here we've got another Raspberry Pi 4 set up in an Argon M.2, or Argon 40 M.2 case. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi 4, obviously. Uh, it's either it's either a four gig or an eight gig. I don't remember, uh, but let's go ahead and uh, let's see if we get better results here. Let's go ahead and there we go. So that's turning on and here in a second, there we go. Uh, so now we should get our, uh, our operating system to boot up. Give that just a second to, uh, to figure out what it's doing there. Uh, booting, so this is, this is looking good so far. There we go, Raspberry Pi desktop. And really what I wanted to do, the reason I'm bringing this up, uh, this, this additional uh, piece of hardware here is to show, um, see there, right there is your mouse cursor. Um, and, and again, that is because uh, by default, let's just turn that on so that it's default. Uh, here you can see there are two uh, mouse cursors here and the, the one on the desktop uh, trails a little bit. Like it's, it's not too far off, but you can see that there's definitely a little bit of lag there, a couple hundred milliseconds of lag uh, with this device, which, it's fine if you're gonna be administering, uh, you know, desktops, servers, things like that. I wouldn't use this for gaming, of course, um, but that's what's what's going on here. Of course, all of this, all of these are plugged in via, uh, via ethernet cables. So uh, they're about as fast as they're gonna get on a one gig connection here. But this is kind of why I had mentioned earlier about uh, turning this off or setting it to none. Uh, Cause then it's, it's while there is still a little bit of lag, uh, you're, you're not getting the double uh, cursor there. That's uh, it's a bit confusing and, and, and off-putting sort of. So uh, that's why I, I suggest if you're gonna do a desktop uh, operating system, uh, I would set that to none uh, just for the sake of simplicity there. Uh, but again, like this is all uh, very, just like using uh, you know the, the desktop if you had uh, a monitor and a mouse and a keyboard and all that kind of stuff plugged into it. Uh, it's all the same, you know, I can come down here and click on terminal. Uh, it'll pop up and I can say I F, oops, I had that right, config. Come on, there we go. All right, and, and so it's it's just like being on the desktop. Again, a little laggy, but definitely better than trying to lug around a bunch of extra equipment if you don't need to. 
So there you go, there is the Tiny Pilot KVM. And of course, what I showed here was a very simple use case uh, for uh, how this works and, and how, it, how you might use it in your rack. I love that uh, just by swapping uh, the, the, the US, one of the USB cables, one of the HDMI cables, you can swap to different devices very, very quickly and easily and be able to uh, manage multiple devices without a lot of extra effort and without a lot of extra hardware. Uh, I know I keep mentioning mice and keyboards and, and monitors and all of this stuff. Like this is stuff that I used to have to uh, you know, bring in from the garage on a regular basis to administer things. And now I don't. Now I've got uh, this tiny KVM. I can administer everything through my browser and it just really simplifies all of my hardware management stuff uh, without having to uh, without having to, to lug a bunch of stuff in and out and, and mess up the house and all of this stuff. Now it's just one little device that sits in my rack that I just move things around as I need to. Super, super easy. And I want to give a big shout out to Michael over at Tiny KV or Tiny Pilot KVM for sending this over to me uh, when he reached out. Uh, I, I, did, I, I immediately started looking into it, uh, found some other videos on it, and decided I really wanted to get my hands on it and check it out and share it with you guys because it's, it's just, again, like I said, it's something that I use literally every day uh, when I'm doing stuff in my rack. So uh, it is a couple hundred bucks. I think it's 300 bucks uh, when, when you get it all put together. But the nice thing about it is that you can uh, build this yourself. Uh, all of the, the, everything is open source. It's a Raspberry Pi. It's boards that he has purchased. He put all this together uh, and then built the operating system to do what it does. So uh, you will need to get a, you, you'll, you'll want to get a license for the software uh, in order to get the full functionality out of it. But uh, you can, I believe, actually go to uh, to Tiny uh, Pilot KVM uh, and to their GitHub page and find the source code and deploy it yourself. But I think it is limited uh, without having a license. So it's just something to kind to keep in mind there, but I will have links to everything down below where you can check it out and decide if this is something that you want to add to your uh, network rack. So I hope you found this video uh, at least informative or interesting. If you did, it'd be, uh, it'd be great for me if you give the video a thumbs up, it really would help me out quite a bit. Uh, also, if you know anybody who's looking for a solution like this, share this video with them. Um, if you like this kind of content, uh, do 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 the right thing and subscribe. So doing hardware reviews on here is kind of something I don't do very often. Most of the time I'm talking about self-hosting, home networks, uh, and, and that sort of thing, mostly in Docker. Uh, so if you're interested in Docker content as well as the occasional hardware review, definitely get subscribed. I try to put out two to three videos a week. Uh, lately, I've kind of switched that up to two videos and a live stream every week. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, definitely get subscribed uh, for more content. If you want to support the channel, there are definitely some ways in the description down below uh, where you can find different ways to do uh, that. Uh, but I think with all of that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.